Welcome to this quick little video on some of the emerging trends in the call center training space. My name is Mark Pereira, and I've got about 10 years of call center training experience, which I would like to share some of that with you with regards to some of the call center training trends. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, here, the important training material can be performed in person such as system trainings, program trainings, role playings, while virtual led trainings performed either by WebEx, Zoom, Skype, to name a few, could be done in the form of a web-based training course completion done on a learning management system, LMS, or even whiteboard exercises. Now these hybrid models help those call centers that are adopting a work from home or even a hybrid system when it comes to its work environment. Let's move on to the next topic. Adding short videos, call recordings, knowledge checks, surveys, even crossword puzzles every 10 minutes to your presentation helps keep your audience engaged. Another tip here is make sure that your trainer is passionate and enthusiastic of the information that they are providing to your class. Because if they are not, that's going to show in their tone of voice as well as their body language, which your class is going to pick up on. And if your trainer isn't passionate about the training material, your class isn't going to feel passionate about it either. Usually, training is one direction where the trainer provides information to the class, right? Here, in today's call center training, trainers have to ask for feedback from the class. This helps to ensure one, have they understood the material? And two, what, what is working and what's not working? If your class is providing you feedback, do your best to incorporate that into your training plan. It, it helps them, it tailors the, the training course to them, and it helps them learn. Time and time again, I hear classes telling me that they want to be part of the learning process. Hands-on learning takes time and energy, yes, but pays a higher return on investment through the transfer of knowledge from the trainer to the trainee. And you can accomplish this through scavenger hunts where you provide them a piece of information and they have to find it. Teach back sessions wherein you provide a concept or a training course to your trainees and they have to teach it back to the trainer are just a few examples of hands-on training. Adding interactivity to your slides in the form of click to reveal, learning checks in the form of games, present the material that you have on your web-based training in the form of a story. Remove any slides that have a lot of bullet points or just long worded sentences because what happens is that when your when your class or your trainee picks up or comes across these huge slides they're going to start skipping and skipping through these slides in order to get a completed certificate and when that happens they don't get a lot of information which defeats the purpose of even having that web-based training let's move on to the next topic I always encourage members of the leadership team to spend at least 15 minutes per week with the training class. These conversations help the leadership team and the training class get to know each other. It brings about kind of like a feeling that the team cares about their success in the call center and it kind of it helps to lift them up it it makes them feel that they are human beings and that my leader is spending time out of that day with me 
and is concerned about my success. Find ways, different ways to repeat the information to your class. Each time that they hear the information, it helps them remember pieces of the information or fills up gaps in their knowledge while they are in training. I personally, I personally use different ways to accomplish this objective, such as using knowledge checks, as I mentioned before, or even quick review sessions every single morning before class can start. And as I mentioned before, those teach back sessions are great. I see mentoring as a means to emphasize what was taught in the class. But in order for mentoring to be effective, one, your quality assurance team needs to qualify those mentors. Get permission from the mentor that they are okay with having someone sit with them and also get feedback from your trainee to see is it working out because sometimes you have great agents and they're great agents but they just can't teach try to weed these things out and qualify mentors so that your trainees get the most out of those mentoring sessions so once our, our trainees leave the class what we do is we hold regular sessions or regular meetings with them to understand how things are going do they have any questions we send out weekly surveys asking them for feedback and tailor make some of these coaching sessions with them based on the feedback that they provide us not only that but we also do quality assurance reviews which we need to do as usual and that provides us with a good amount of feedback in terms of gearing the training for their needs and the feedback that we receive goes into either creating new training material or tweaking our training material we can't expect agents to open huge manuals or powerpoint slides while in the middle of a call right their average handle time their whole time is going to go up information that they need needs to be at their fingertips either in the form of micro learning so even by using chatbots where they can type in uh, a certain query or even go to, uh, go to an intranet site and type in a certain search and that should come up for them helping them understand the process or the policies that need to be followed in order to take care of the caller and lastly Thank you for watching this short video on some of the emerging trends in the call center training space. I hope you've learned something from today's session. Have a great day. Thank you.